Yo, guys, so my most recent game was done on Vox Populi with the July 1st patch. Uh, used unique components, so every Civ gets an extra two uh, unique things in their arsenal, and also played with my difficulty mod to make it more difficult. And this game was done with the Incans. So Incans get bonus to uh, science, gold, and food on mountains, scaling with era, and then uh, units can cross hills better and cross mountains and then build roads and stuff on them as well you get a unique archer um a unique improvement that goes on hills uh, a unique scout and a unique granary as well so quite a few early things there now firstly uh use the um community map which has been coming with the recent VP versions because they basically have put in a mountain bias thing that Incans now get and obviously it is pretty important to have mountains near you otherwise you don't really get <laughs> uh, many of the bonuses so we did have a mountain nearby move straight on that and um, seemed like we had quite a few mountains around so I wanted to go for goddess of nature for the bonus faith from mountains and natural wonders as well and pretty much whenever I go for this pantheon I will go for a shrine first I feel like you don't really need Stonehenge to get it uh, to get that pantheon um, it doesn't usually get taken and really when you have this pantheon you want to start building settlers so that you can go and settle any natural wonders or cities in the mountains and uh, start getting your faith going that way so I just feel like Stonehenge delays it a bit really and uh, obviously it's always a risk when you do go for Stonehenge that you might not get it. So easier to just go Shrine first, uh, Monument next, and went straight for Pottery so that we could get the unique granaries and start building Settlers. Um, we did have a Barrington Crater nearby, so I went and settled that first, and it was also near some mountains. I mean, it's pretty great, like, when you put a city on a mountain, you basically just get an extra food, gold, and science, like, with no downside whatsoever. Uh, you get like the normal hills, like two food, two production, but then for mountain you actually get three food, two production, one gold, one science. So it's a, a really nice start to be honest. And yeah, it's definitely worth putting all of your cities on mountains. I think you do get bonus defense as well. So um, went for progress. I'm really liking progress recently. The plus three production you can take on the, you know, kind of second policy you take. Uh, is really insanely good actually um, helps you build all the buildings in your cities and like I feel like progress was close before that and this seems like enough to make it good uh, with a unique improvement as well um, that makes progress better and wanted to build quite a few cities and have them all be quite nice so it seemed like a pretty good choice here um, went for Temple of Artemis next in the capital progress is quite nice for helping you get some of them second tech tier wonders because you get a nice science boost early on uh, and I wanted to have the 10% food in all cities and we have a unique uh, range unit so it would help build them and also uh, urbanization reduction is nice too because did want to work great people in the capital and calendar is also on the rate of writing did want to try and get great library since we had a pretty good start it's generally the best way to go if you think you can get it and you don't necessarily need military stuff early on uh, went mining because we had gold as our resource and uh, wanted to build the wells as well so we were building like the Kulkas, which is the unique granary first in each city this gives like a bonus to production from what a granary we would normally get and you get the cocoa resource, uh, which basically gives um, improves uh, worker construction rate. So with them, and then wells next, and with the plus three production from uh, progress, we had really insane production in our new cities. They were able to get those like uh, small buildings built very quickly. And they had good uh, early food as well, which meant I think I only had to build one settler in my capital, which is ideal so I could keep growing it and getting the uh, progress bonuses. Still managed to get back in time for terracotta since we used the free tech from Great Library and got a religion on turn 78 so not too early because we didn't, weren't building shrines first but still like a very safe religion just unlikely to get first and yeah we did get third religion um, I didn't actually get the beliefs which I wanted which was theocratic as founder 
But when per went for um, Apostolic instead, uh, it kind of does work with progress since the food allows you to grow in the capital and then you get the science uh, bonuses and then we were definitely going to be able to use the faith at some point on uh, great writers or scientists or whatever. And yeah, I went for orders for defense because it turned out that we were kind of in the middle of the map. Um, we had a really nice mountain location, but we were surrounded by like sieves on all different sides. So kind of everywhere I settled pissed somebody off and we literally ended up annoying everyone. Uh, got declared war on like rather early by uh, Carthage and Indonesia Cold War who were like on each side of us. Uh, luckily, you know, with the mountains and being able to move in mountains it does make it a lot easier. And so I had to start um, building quite a few of the slingers. I really do like these guys. They get a withdraw chance and they can also ignore zone of control. But the best thing about them is the concussive hits, which uh, reduces anyone they hit like combat strength by 15%, I think, which is quite significant and works very well with the fact that you'll usually use your archers on units first and then you can use melee units or just more ranged units after and they'll be weaker to ranged attacks as well. Got them upgraded to a uh, composite bowmen and then we really didn't have too much difficulty once we had some composite bowmen. Like, they're honestly fine for classical era war and especially with the concussive hits bonus. Um, and the ability to move through mountains as well works really well for the ranged units because they can't get melee attacked uh, unless you build roads in the mountains, which is what I found out. So basically try not to ever build roads in the mountains um, because you'll just allow the enemy units to actually attack you into mountains, which they wouldn't normally be able to do. Had another uh, war declared on us by England and America, so we were at war with all of our neighbours like fairly early on, which wasn't great, but again, we had good defence and stuff, so it wasn't too much of a problem. Uh, started spamming out loads of the terrace farms, which is the unique improvement. So they give uh, two production and one food, and they get quite a few bonus foods from like um, adjacent terrace farms or adjacent uh, mountains. So these are like really good tiles, but you do want to have like, you're going to end up with quite high population in order to like get a good amount of production from them. Um, but yeah, definitely like very good early on. I guess they don't scale super well, but they are really nice at the start. And yeah, we were snowballing pretty hard with the uh, like high pop in the capital, giving us lots of science and the fact that we got a great library and we're getting culture from kills with the terracotta army. Um, so I managed to build Oracle as well and went for Medieval through Theology. I was really aiming to try and get a Hagia Sophia, which was why I wanted to go Theology first and wanted to get into Medieval because that doubles the quite a few of the bonuses, including the yields from Mountains. So I made the Mountains, you know, two food, two science, two gold, which is kind of workable if you need a bit of extra science in cities. And yeah, we had built quite a few cities. Uh, I kind of felt like if I didn't build cities, then I was going to have to conquer some. So I'd rather just build all the cities that I wanted uh, as quickly as possible, even though it did annoy people. But, um, you know, if we had like less than 10 cities, we probably would have had to like commit to a big war to conquer some. So I wanted to make sure I had all the good squares uh, finished progress. And yeah, just started building the National Wonders, really. We had very good pops, so we're able to get them out rather early, including Oxford University, which is probably like the best natural wo national wonder, I would say. Um, yeah, decided to go for fealty next. We had a nice wide empire, which was all going to have our religion in those cities and quite a few pastures as well and internal trade routes is another thing. So quite a few synergies with fealty and it gives bonus defense and food. So <laughs> I think all around it was um, a pretty nice one to go for. Uh, yeah, used Hagia Sophia to get our enhancer belief. Again, we weren't first on this. So um, there was India and Celts in the game, which was who beat us to religion before. And India also beat us to enhancing because they don't do uh, missionaries. So they're kind of always going to get there first. Uh, kind of annoying because they took the Enhancer Belief that I wanted, which was Mendiancy. 
So I went for symbolism instead for the great people points in the capital. Uh, symbolism is kind of my go-to, like, it's always my second choice if it's not my first. Um, I feel like it's always pretty good. Yeah, once the wars were over and we had our cities converted, I started trying to convert um, Carthage and England. So luckily, uh, you know, the Celts and the Indians got to religion before us, but the downside for them is that they don't really use missionaries because um, they're not interested in spreading their religion out. So we were kind of able to do a lot of spreading with our missionaries and get good bonuses every time we... Um, got to a new tech. I really wanted to try and get to Reformation Belief first because I really wanted to get uh, Faith of the Masses um, before anyone else did because that one usually goes first um, and I felt like we really needed bonus culture because we had really good science from the mountains and progress um, but culture can be a little bit of an issue and the happiness from it is actually pretty nice as well. Did manage to get that. I mean obviously I would have just gone Glory of God if not but I think Faith of the Masters did help us quite a lot with culture in the mid-game. So I'm definitely glad we got that. Uh, next wonder I wanted was Machu Picchu, which is normally quite gettable if you really want it and you have a decent mountain city that can build it quickly. And we actually built it in Machu, so that was nice. I uh, had a nice 11 mountain tiles there. Shivery next because I needed castles for the next wars and stables as well as i mentioned we had quite a few pasture resources and then next wonder was forbidden palace the progress finisher wonder gives a reduced uh investment cost always nice to go for i feel like though not probably the end of the world if we didn't get it and i wanted to get to renaissance pretty quickly Again, we had quite a few era scaling bonuses, so it's nice to try and get into the next era as quick as possible. And uh, from civil service, you can go straight into banking um, and get into Renaissance quite quickly that way. Also, the banks, um, they upgrade the gold which we had. And since we had Forbidden Palace, we did want to do like building investments. So yeah, we were quite um, ahead at this point, which was very nice. We'd been able to build like most of the wonders that we really wanted, but people did start catching up at this point. Managed to get to printing press first, um, so we could be a host of World Congress. Uh, there was quite a few statecraft civs, so it was kind of important to get there. Otherwise, we might not have had enough uh, votes to be allowed to propose a resolution. Um, and there was some stuff that I wanted to try and get through, of course. The wars did start getting more tricky, tricky as well once people were bringing knights and stuff and like Indonesia had quite a few of their swordsmen that they'd built. Um, yeah, so it got a bit more tricky. It was like Carthage and Celts and Indonesia were the main ones. Um, but once we built some knights and uh, got to crossbows, it was pretty much fine again. But yeah, at this point India did start catching up with us. Um, they were not really getting declared war on by anyone, they were kind of in a corner. And I think they had Austria, who they were friends with, was like their main neighbour. So they were able to just kind of chill while we had to build quite a few military units. And they did start overtaking us. Uh, still managed to get Leaning Tower of Pisa, which was nice. And yeah, went maximum culture so that I could try and get to 12 policies to build Porcelain Tower, which was the next wonder I really wanted from Renaissance. So since we had uh, three series following our religion, I actually managed to get world religion through. can't remember what the others were distracted by. I think we like just about got it through with some help uh, and converted uh, Austria as well. They even gave us open borders, so that was nice. And with world religion and four uh, civs converted to our religion, we had like really good pressure on the map because it was kind of like a Pangiri map where every city is pressuring every other city. So if you can kind of win the pressure war, uh, it does get very powerful. And like I said, we were quite lucky with the fact that India and Celts weren't really competing with us for uh, missionary spreads. I had to use a great engineer to try and get Sistine Chapel. Uh, we had a wide empire with culture in every city, so I did like the 10% bonus culture. 
I thought it was worth rushing for that and then went industrial through scientific theory again just trying to get there quickly um, so that we could up our era bonuses again and obviously build public schools but at this point um, India was definitely trying to pull ahead so kind of had to start picking and choosing wonders uh, rather than just being able to build most of them since we were getting to text first before then. So next wonder I wanted was Eiffel Tower. I mean I would have liked quite a few of the uh, industrial wonders but again I had to choose like one really since India was building all the other ones quite quickly and uh, yeah use the free tech from rationalism which was the next policy tree that I went for. Um, the free tech is you can choose it as like the second policy. I think we chose it as a third to get it to time perfectly to get us dynamite and build Eiffel Tower so that we could get more policies and uh, good to deny that one from India I think. I uh, definitely needed rationalism this game because I didn't have glory of God so it was the only way I was going to be able to buy great scientists and I mean obviously it was good uh, the observatories work well with the mountains. We did have some good uh, stuff going on in World Congress, which wasn't even me really. Uh, scholars in residence got through and somebody actually suggested sanctioning India, which got through as well. Uh, so it was kind of nice that they recognised that India was running away with the game a bit and they needed to be slowed down. Uh, we had some pretty long grindy wars that were going on. I was thinking we could try and make some progress since we were still a bit ahead of these other guys in tech but it was super difficult because we had no allies. Um, it was kind of a shame that everyone decided to hate us apart from like Austria who wasn't even close to us or had a big military or anything. So it was very difficult to grind down one sieve especially while we had sieves on the other side like attacking us as well so we couldn't focus our full troops. Um, I kind of felt like I needed to sort the wars out so I went for modern era through combustion so that we could get oil and land ships. Obviously we had no oil, I had to like create general two different places just to get four oil. Um, yeah and meanwhile India was building the food corporation and went for order ideology which was very scary um, because that's probably the best corporation um, and order is generally the best ideology as well like and they work really well together with like the internal trade routes and nationalization and um, iron curtain I think it is so they kind of started getting pretty out of hand and um, Order also gives quite good bonuses to tourism and also very good bonuses to science later on. So it's generally just a really scary ideology to go against and I kind of felt like I wanted to go for Order uh, myself and there's a policy in there that increases tourism to other Order civilizations. So it made it a bit of a tricky decision of whether I should go Order or just go Autocracy and try and conquer my way through but the wars were difficult and um, I felt like order would give us definitely the most uh, economically and the most science as well for the space victory which was kind of what I was aiming for. Uh, managed to rush for motherland calls I think with some great scientists uh, before they got there because they went up for like uh, empire state building and corporations first. So that was nice to deny them the free policy as well and get it for ourselves. Uh, for our corporation, actually went for civilized jewelers. Um, so the way that it worked is once we had nationalization, every office that we built count as a franchise. And I think we had like 12 cities or something. So every city got 120% or maybe even a bit more a great person great so I basically started working great scientists in like quite a few cities like the maximum amount that we could with the observatories and libraries universities public schools and research labs a bit later um yeah so we were like getting a lot of great scientist points and the idea was to just kind of blitz out great scientists at the end and help us get some more great writers as well Finally did start making some war progress as well once we had the land ships and a bit of a tech advantage over Carthage. I think we basically used Gatling guns 
and uh, land ships and riflemen and then we're able to get our field guns actually in position to do some attacks uh, with using great generals as well so that was nice uh, I think we took like Notre Dame, Colossus and Petra actually from them so a couple of extra trade routes and also got us a, a monopoly on marble as well for 10% bonus culture which was rather useful uh, India was still snowballing very very hard building like every wonder that we didn't and again kind of luckily in the congress uh, world's fair got proposed um not even by me i was kind of thinking to wait another for the next session after but it turned out to be really good timing because uh india was getting so close on the uh, tourism victory and we had to start doing culture processes and getting loads of great writers um to actually keep them behind they were influential with everyone else apart from us and uh yeah we only kept them behind with loads of great writers uh, got travel banned through at the next congress session but still it they had a uh, very high tourism with us so it was only a matter of time and they were also now like way ahead on tech going towards space victory so had to start buying some great scientists and catching up very quickly uh next session we you did the international space station uh, world project and since we had like factories built everywhere and um, very high production from the five year plan with um, all the terrace farms that we had and the fact that we had quite a few cities as well, uh, we did manage to win that which turned out to be super useful. I did not realize how powerful it was but the production you get in your capital every time you make a new tech makes building wonders and spaceship parts super fast. Um, so I'll definitely try and make sure I do that whenever I can. So we had like a pretty crazy turn uh, a couple of turns after we got that where use some great scientists um, and then the two free techs from the order tier three policy to like, I think we got like three or four techs in one go to uh, get to robotics and then build Hubble Space Telescope like instantly with the International Space Station bonuses. So that was another nice one to deny from them. I think we got another great scientist and increased production on spaceship parts from that. Yeah, finally uh, managed to break Indonesia since we had tanks now and they did not, uh, but I had to peace out because we needed to get our happiness under control for going for the finish. Uh, we overtook India on tech like right at the end with the, all the great scientists that we had and we built CERN as well for two free techs um, and then started building the spaceship parts as fast as we could managed to use the international space station bonuses to build three parts in the capital while we built one part in each of the three other cities uh, use like internal trade routes um, with iron curtain which we got in the end like internal production trade routes, some great engineers that we had, I think one in each city, and yeah, just pretty high production in the cities. And they all completed on exactly the same turn, which was very nice. So turn 283, we got the spaceship done. So year 1826, crazy early. Um, I don't think I've ever been close on this with a science victory. So I was very happy with that one and we checked after and India was four turns away from building their final part so could not have got gone much more down to the wire than that. Just a pretty crazy game, very enjoyable one to win in the end though there was some serious grind in the middle with all of the wars that we had to do though I suppose we got quite a bit out of it since we had the orders and terracotta army. Um, yeah we ended up with loads of spare faith actually. So potentially could have bought some more great people earlier on, but I didn't want to buy them early and then not be able to buy them later on when they're much better. So yeah, that was my game as the Incans. I definitely think Incans are a fun tip to play, especially when you have the mountain bias, so I would recommend using the community map. Yeah, just very nice economic bonuses. Oh, I didn't really mention the unique scout. We didn't use it too much. We basically just used it to make uh, medics because it starts off with medic one, so you can eat easily get a medic 2 with them 
Um, but they're still, unfortunately, scouts are a bit too weak to use like for uh, combat stuff because they're just a bit too fragile. But it was nice to have some easier um, medics to make and not have to use horses because normally I do it with ranged cavalry if I have some horses. And I'd have to say, so when I made the tier list, I think I put Incan's high tier A. I feel like that's correct. I mean, if you can guarantee having a good amount of mountains, they are S. But I think even with mountain bias, you may only get like a few mountains about. So I feel like probably if you're not in a mountain range, you'll have to like conquer into one, which potentially can be done as well. But I think high A, maybe low S is a fair enough rating for them but yeah that was the summary of my recent game i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys who watched the series enjoyed as well did do a fair amount of it live on twitch which is what we shall do for the start of the next game as well and that is going to be germany um hope you guys will join me there if you want to see that should be a bit different of a game because we won't have such an explosive start um and we'll have to try and probably get through kind of a bad early game and see if we can win later on but yeah follow me on twitch if you want to see that and make sure you subscribe to my youtube as well i will post the game here also uh, that should be next monday that will be starting all right guys hope you're all doing good and i'll see you soon